GeoShred 6.5, new preset management, iCloud synchronization, and automation. One of the features of GeoShred 6.5 is that preset management has been completely redesigned. So there used to be a set list called All Presets, which was nothing more than an unorganized pool of presets. So at this point, the All Preset set list has been eliminated, but what you now have is you have Search. Our original intention was that the, the set list would be the way that you would explore the preset space in GeoShred, and so that is retained. But now, say that you want to find all the violins, you would search for violin. And you can see here that there are presets with the name violin found in each of these set lists. Uh, GeoGem Track Strumming, Diatonic Geo Violins, our favorites. And uh, here is the, uh, the Geo Violins, and here are the Nauta Carnatic Violins. Also, when you are creating a set list, I'm going to create a new set list here from scratch. And now when you go to add presets to the set list, you can simply search. So for instance, if I want to search for um, Dobro, you can see all the different presets that contain the name Dobro. If you would still like to see all the presets in a single list, you can use the All button. at how iCloud synchronization works with uh, GeoShred 6.5. I'm going to go ahead and launch GeoShred and the first thing it's going to ask me is if I would like to use iCloud. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to create uh, a new preset called Test 1. Great. And I'll just go ahead and save that and close that. And I'm going to create a second one called Test 2. Okay, I'll go ahead and save that and close that. Now you'll notice that these two presets are in a set list called user set list. And um, if I go ahead here and look, you'll see at all the set lists, you see all presets is gone. Um, that's because um, we now have search so that you can find anything. So for instance, if I search for TEST, I see test one in user set list, great. Okay, that's good. Do one more thing here. Because it's been synchronized in iCloud, I'm going to look in the Files app here. I'm going to look in iCloud Drive, and I'm going to look in the GeoShred directory. And you can see that there's my Test 1 and Test 2. So it's been synchronized over into iCloud. On my phone, and I'm going to go ahead and look at the Files app here. Go ahead and look at the Files app. And we'll see here in this directory called GeoShred. You can see there's my um, uh, test one, test two, and user set list from my uh, previous device. So, um, from my iPad. Now I'm going to go ahead and launch GeoShred here. It's going to ask me if I would like to use iCloud for synchronization. Yes, I would like to use iCloud for synchronization. And, okay, and now I can see that I can see uh, user set list and I can see. Um, my presets test one and test two and um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new preset called uh, test three and I'll go ahead and save that close that and now let me, let me look at my user set list test one test two test three so I'm going to go back to my iPad now okay I'm back here on my iPad I'm going to launch GeoShred and now if I go here and look at user set list, uh, it's got pre three presets in it. And if I take a look at it, it's a test one, test two, test three. So let's talk about automation. You can see there's an automation parameter here in GeoShred. So I have uh, an example. What I've done here, if you look in the preset here, is I've added the Moog VCF to the Tread Lead Guitar and I propose to use automation to sweep the frequency on the Moog VCF. So that, that sounds like a very interesting and tangible example. So um, we need to talk a little bit about automation. So automation for AUV3 allows you to automate any of the, the synthesizers or filters um, parameters. GeoShred has over a thousand automatable parameters. Turns out that AUV3 falls apart at about 200. 
parameters. So what we had to do is create this mechanism here where we have user-defined parameters and you map the internal parameters from GeoShred to the user-defined parameters. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to map the Moog VCF filter cutoff to user parameter 1. So that looks good. So now we're going to do a little quick recording here. Uh, I'm playing it from my iPad and um, go ahead and record this. Great. Just a little uh, thing with perfect fifths. And now if we go here to um, the automation in logic, I am going to choose GeoShred user parameter 01. And I'm going to use the pencil tool to draw a bunch of shapes. And we should hear the filter sweep as this um, plays back. So let's go ahead and play it back. Nice. Exactly what I expected. So that is parameter um, automation, the controller automation. So as you may be aware, all of the GeoShred models uh, respond to MPE. So there is a, uh, in MPE, there are three dimensional controls uh, and the control that is used for expression is uh, channel aftertouch or channel pressure. So this particular preset is the cello with a vowel. Uh, this particular preset, if it is sent uh, channel aftertouch, channel pressure messages, it will respond with sweeping through the vowels. It's the cello sweeping through the vowels. So if we take a look at the control surface here, um, under poly EXPR, you can see that there's a lot of complicated stuff that's going on to make those vowels. And in fact, there's um, a bunch of different parameters. And uh, some of these parameters have lookup tables like this right here, which are, are how the vowels are encoded into um, this particular uh, preset. So it would be very hard to use parameter uh, automation to automate that because you're controlling five parameters and it's going through lookup tables. But if you can just send the MIDI channel pressure control, then you can go right through the, uh, the mechanism that the designer of the preset intended for uh, vowel expression. So let's go ahead and uh, make a quick recording of the cello with no expression, and then we'll use uh, MIDI, MIDI um, automation to send the channel pressure to it. Let's go ahead and do this. That's three notes and uh, no expression. Let's go back and play them back again for a second. Great. Uh, if we go to the piano roll, um, you'll see if you turn on the automation parameter for um, control for the piano roll that you can automate MIDI controls. And so what I'm going to automate is um, aftertouch. And I'm going to use the, uh, the pencil tool to draw some crazy aftertouch values uh, where it's aftertouch or channel pressure. So T, uh, pencil tool. So within the note, I'm going to go all the way from the bottom. And we'll do some crazy things right there. And we'll do some crazy things right there. And now let's go ahead and uh, play it back. And we'll see if we get the vowel automation. So that's MIDI parameter automation. There are some things to consider about automation. In order to create automation in GeoShred, it was necessary to change the size of the parameter tree to add additional parameters. And it happens to be that AUV3 does not handle changes in parameter tree sizes very well. And so uh, in going from uh, projects that were created er with versions of GeoShred earlier than the current version, um, the project may not load or the plugins may not load. And so there's a procedure that you can use to deal with this. So here's a project that I created um, with Logic using the uh, 8.1 version of GeoShred, which did not have automation. And I'm going to go ahead and load it, and I'll try to play it. Uh, 
and it doesn't play. And in fact, if I look here at the plugin, the plugin didn't load properly. And the reason it didn't load is because the parameter tree is different in uh, the latest version of GeoShred. And so um, what you need to do is this. Close the project. Go ahead and open the uh, standalone version of GeoShred. And I'm going to turn automation. I'm going to disable automation. Okay. And now I can go to uh, Logic Pro app and I can load this project again. And now it works fine because automation is turned off. It's using the old automation format. So what you need to do now is go into uh, the plugin, GeoShred. And um, in the UI, I'm going to go ahead and under settings, I'm going to turn automation back on. Okay, and now I'm going to save the project. And I'm going to close it and reopen it. And you'll see that now it works correctly. So that's GeoShred 6.5, new preset management, iCloud synchronization, and automation.